Pulihin ang ating Diyos na buhay, mga kapatid. Let's give Him the best club offering. Yes, let's give the Lord the best offering and praise. Hallelujah. God is awesome in our midst. Amen. And uh, this time, we're going to celebrate His goodness. We're going to declare His uh, uh, faithful love to all of us. As the song says, Great is his, is his faithfulness to all of us. Amen. And uh, in, uh, in His goodness, we are going to dwell. We are going to hold on to His promises. Amen. Once again, welcome everyone, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ here in Jesus and in my church, Port Macquarie. And to those who are tuning us uh, via Facebook Live and YouTube, uh, JA1 Church Port Mamore channel. So, God is awesome. I'm Pastor Juno Perpus, your lead pastor here at this church, and I am privileged and honored to welcome you and to share to you the wonderful message of our God today. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recover the sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. We have this acceptable year from the Lord. Amen. Despite of what we are going through, despite the world is experiencing, still the Lord's favor is upon His people. Amen. Do you agree with me? Praise God. So let us ask the Lord for His grace and His mercy as we study and ponder His message this morning. Shall we bow down God and pray? Father in heaven, we are so thankful for this opportunity, for this privilege to study your word. Lord God, apart from you, we can't do nothing. And Lord God, this time we are asking that you cleanse us with the most precious blood of the Lamb, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord God, make us worthy before you. And Lord God, thank you so much for your spirit that is dwelling in us and teaching us and letting us know the revelation, the teachings, the message that you want us to learn and we could apply in our lives so that we could be more benefited from it, oh Lord God. And your name will be lifted up. Lord God, we thank you because the enemy is nothing and there's no weapon that the form against us will prosper and we have the victory in Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, let's give the Lord the best club offering that we could give. Amen. How are you guys? Amen. God is awesome. Hallelujah. So we are studying about the life of David. And last Sunday, we talked about for whom God, the favor of God. Who will receive the favor of God? And we learned that those who will receive the favor of God are those who are ready for reconciliation. God reminded us about the importance of reconciliation. God reminded us about um, forgiveness, for asking and for receiving and releasing forgiveness. Amen? We also reminded that we are going to have the favor of God because He is so faithful, God. That's why let us stay in our ground. Let's stay in our, on the ground of God's promises, holding unto Him. Amen? Let us, let us not sway. Let us not um, worry. Let us not forget His faithfulness in us. Let us always keep uh, our hearts and our mind and everything in us in faith to our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, this morning, I'm going to share to you the continuation of what we were talking about from the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 10, verse uh, 12. Now, this is the focus that we are going to learn. And if you have your Bible with me, you can read or you can uh, read at our projector. It says in 2 Samuel, chapter 10, verse 12, be strong and let us fight bravely for our people and the cities of our God. The Lord will do what is good in His sight. This morning, I entitled this message, Reminder. Reminder to the soldiers of Christ. Are you soldiers? Amen? Reminder to God's soldiers. Are you soldier of God? And what kind of soldier are you? Are you a defeated one or are you a victorious one? 
Amen. I don't know what you are going through, but I do believe that God is faithful. And He will let you succeed in what you are experiencing right now, or from what you're experiencing right now. So, there are only three reminders that I'm going to share to you this morning. And first is, be strong. Amen? Say it yourself. Be strong. Be strong. Be strong. In other translation, it goes like this, the New Life Version. Be strong. Let us show ourselves to have strength of heart. Because of our people and the seeds of our God, and may the Lord do what is good in his eyes. So the background of the story, Joab and Abishai, they were fighting the Ammonites. And these Ammonites are uh, so valiant soldiers, but they don't have enough uh, army. So they ask for help from other armies. And uh, this uh, Israelite armies uh, were surrounded by different armies from the south to the north, from the east and the west. That's why they, they talk to one another. These generals talk to one another and said, if we are getting been defeated, you need to help us. But if you are going to be defeated, we are going to help us. But then they told to the people, to the armies, be strong and let us fight bravely for our people and the cities of our God. They say two things, be strong and let's fight bravely. Because if you not do these things, your people will perish. Your land will be taken from you. And don't forget that the land is the Lord's and the people belongs to him. Amen? So, and then afterwards, they told to one another and to the people, they said, okay, but the Lord will do what is good in his sight. Sometimes, we are exerting all our efforts and we get frustrated when the outcome is not the outcome that we are expecting. Am I right? But the Lord is telling us, there's something that you learn today. And be reminded, be strong. October is about to end. Two more months, and 2020 is over. Amen? We've been so many things. This is the first year of the decade. And just imagine what will be the next. But this is what I'm telling you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Be strong. Be strong. God is not dead. He is alive. Our God is not weak. He's powerful. Our God is able to do more, more than we could expect and more than we could imagine. Can I get amen? amen? Praise God. So, let us be strong and let us fight bravely. Last year, we had this verse. We had this topic. And that's about, this is our theme, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. And I was telling God, I was, God, you're so amazing because you prepared us to be strong and courageous without knowing that we're going through at this pandemic. Did you see that? How God prepared our hearts. How God prepared our lives so that we could be ready. If we just learned from that message last year, I think the whole year we're talking about it and now we're talking about the life of David. And I was thinking, I was praying, Lord, why do you want me to share this again? Because this is a reminder. The year will, have, will be ended in two months, but our God will never. He's the same God of yesterday and the one is doing today and the one who holds tomorrow. Amen? So remember, remember God's presence. God is a loving Father who doesn't want His children to feel alone. In our battles in life, be reminded that you are not fighting alone. God is with you. He is with us. Let's go back in Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. And starting from verse 6 to 9, brother. This book of the law. 
Okay, I'm going to start from verse 6. Be strong and courageous, because you will lead this people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. This is verse 7. Be very careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right, to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate, it, meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. In verse 9, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. That's a reminder to you, J E one people, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, my friends. Beloved of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be strong and brave. Be strong and courageous. Amen. So we need courage. We need our courage to keep our balance. If you are not courageous, you will just be depressed. You will give up. And where are you going to end? You will be lost forever. We need courage as we get hit by many new feelings. How many indescribable feelings that we have in the past few months? Huh. We, there is so much uncertainties in job, in workplaces, in school, in family. We don't know what, hap what will happen next. That's why we need courage. We need to be strong. We need to be brave. Amen. We need courage. These two things are uh, together. We cannot remove the be becoming strong and not becoming brave or courageous. If you, want to, if you need to be courageous, you need to be strong. And therefore, for you to be strong, you need to have strength. And strength only not come from people, not from wealth, not from connection, but God. The source of all strength. As St. Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Congratulations because you overcame many trials, many adversities in life in the past few months. You're here. Alive. Enthusiastic. Handsome and beautiful. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. The Lord's glory. For the Lord's glory. But we need courage because there are less of new feelings that could hit us. There could be facts, restrictions. Look at that. We have masks. I don't have one. But look at that. This is not the normal, right? We can worship together as, we, as before. There are limitations. There are obstacles. There are challenges. But we need courage. And where do we get courage? How are we we're going to get strength? From Him. Jesus, our God. Source of all strength. Amen? We need courage to endure times of adversity and to make changes that adversity compels us to make. I believe that after this pandemic, you will be changed. We are changed. We're going to be changed, not for worse, but for better. For sure, our faith will be not the same faith as we had before. This time, you will not be relaxed. You will not seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Instead, you will do that because you don't know what will be next. You are not sure what will happen next. But in God, who promised that in me, I have a great plan for you, and that's for your future. And that's for you to have hope. And that's for you to prosper. So, we need change. And we need courage to experience those changes. And to face those changes. Amen. So in any case, in any case, be reminded, soldiers of God, we can trust the Holy Spirit to help us in times of adversities and to grow in change so that we can live in keeping with the example set by Jesus Christ. If there is someone that we can follow, that we could imitate, that we can model from, none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. He suffered a lot, but he's so courageous to face the cross just for us. Amen? He's so courageous. We're so courageous to face the cross 
to carry the burdens just for all of us. That's why, my dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, Jayon family, come on, be strong, be brave, fight bravely, be courageous. Amen? I don't know what you're going through in your family, in your relationship, in your finances, in your spiritual life, but this is a reminder, a great reminder to all of us, from, to me and to all of us, be strong and fight bravely. So as we study Joshua chapter 6, verses uh, 6 to 9, Joshua chapter 1, verses 6 to 9, there are three specific times the Lord spoke to Joshua about courage. In verse 6, it says, Be strong and courageous, because you will lead this people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to keep them. But this word is given thousands of years ago to a man who led Israel after Moses. But the spiritual truth is, be, is still applicable to all of you. You are a leader. You are a leader of your family. You are a leader of your relationship. You are a leader of the church. You are a leader of a certain uh, group. Even a small one in a big group. To make decisions that affected other people under his leadership, we need to be courageous. I need to be courageous. As a pastor of this church, the lead pastor, I need to be courageous so that the people I'm leading will be the same. Just imagine. Am I a weakling? That I am a depressed pastor and a reluctant pastor and a pastor who has no courage to face and to live. And just imagine you. If you are a parent, if you are a father or mother, if you are a boyfriend or girlfriend, if you are a boss, if you are a co-worker, and you are not courageous, you are not strong, you are surrounded by people who are so vulnerable to the attacks of the enemies. You are surrounded by those people who could be depressed and could kill themselves. You who have Jesus, you who has the Holy Spirit, the power of God indwelling in you, because you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, are the strong one. In your workplaces, people must see the strength that, that God has given to you. Amen? Make sure that your words are full of encouragement and make people edified or encouraged. Make sure that you are God's extension of strength to many people around you. Amen. Amen. If you are a father or a mother, as I told you a while ago, you need to be the example, the leader of courage. Amen. Now, that's why this is the first specific time. Joshua, you need to be courageous. You need to be strong because you are a leader. And all of you are a leader. All of us are, are leaders. We need to be strong. We need to be courageous. You will receive messages back home or from here. Text messages or whatever situations. You must be God's extension of courage. Are you? And are you praying to be like that? Amen. Now, the second specific time in verse 7. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left. That you may be successful wherever you go. This is what God's desire for you to be successful. This is God's desire in plan. For you to experience prosperity. When we say prosperity, it's not just the wealth. But God saying it's prosperity in all domains of your life, especially your spiritual life. So this message of being strong and very courageous in verse 7 is given to keep the laws and commandments. Even, even as changes happen. The world, we know the abrupt change or changes in the world in our economy, in the way of life, but you need to be strong and courageous so that you are still able to follow what is in the law or in the commandments of God. 
Many people will sway from this message. Many people will not take hold of the promises of God. But you must be courageous. If people are denying their faith because of the situation, because of their experiences, you should not. You should remain courageous and you should be, remain strong because this is what God told you. Amen? Hold on to the promises of God. The Bible says, remain in me and let the word of mine remain in you and ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. Amen? Many other people are saying, no, I don't need faith. Or I, I, I want to give up my faith because look at what's happening. No, not this time. Not this time. And never it should happen. This is not the time to, to just be quiet. It's the time for you to, to be vocal in proclaiming the word of God and for declaring the word of God over your life, over your family. Don't allow the enemy to steal that. Amen? The seed representing the word of God in your life. So to keep the laws and the commandments, you need to be strong. Amen? Even the world crumbles. Amen? Whatever happens in the world, just take note. Great is his faithfulness. So, be of good courage and let us be strong for our people and for the cities of our God. That's what Job, sa Job said. And may the Lord do what is good in his sight. So, this is a very good speech by Joab before the battle. And he made some points here. Be of good courage and let us be strong. Because courage and strength are not matters of feeling and circumstance. I will repeat. Courage and strength are not matters of feeling and circumstance. Courage and strength, they are matters of choice. They are available to all of us if you're going to choose to take them. You can choose to be dismayed, to be discouraged, to be disappointed, to be depressed, to be stressed. But you can choose to be strong and courageous. Which the Lord wants us to do. And to have. Amen. So they are matters of choice. Especially when God makes his strength available to us. I'm going to say again. The strength of God is available to all of us. That's why we can be strong and courageous. God will not make you strong. He wants you to take his strength for you to become strong. It says, it, it's the same as the, the buffet is ready. You will not be able to, to um, experience how sumptuous the food, how good are they, unless you go get the plate and take some food in it. God's strength is available right now. God's courage is available right now. But it's a matter of choice to all of us. While you are facing or experiencing this circumstance or this adversity, what is your choice? Are you going to take this available strength from God, this available courage from God, so that you can be strong and brave or courageous? Amen? It's your choice. It's our choice. The strength is available. God wants us to be strong. That's why he commanded us. This is a commandment. Amen? It's our choice. If you want to be defeated, then don't take the strength from God. Don't take courage. But if you really want to prosper and able to do the things he asks you to do, and you want to be success successful wherever you go, then this is the encouragement to all of us. Take the courage. Get the strength from God. Amen. So we can be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, according to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. So Job, when he said, Be strong, let us fight bravely for the people and for the land. As the Lord commanded to Joshua, be strong and courageous. My brothers and my sisters, this is a, a message calling to all of us to remember. What we will be lost. What are, what are we going to lose. If we are going not to be strong and courageous. 
I was saying this in Tagalog. Ano kaya ang mawawala sa iyo kapag hindi ka nagpakatapang at nagpakalakas? Who will be benefited if you take the strength from the Lord and the courage from the Lord? You, your children, your family, and other people who will hear your testimony. And the Lord God Almighty will be glorified in your life. Amen? That's why this is a reminder to all of you. I am not talking to the weaklings. I am talking to the armies of God. To the soldiers of heaven, the host, our God Almighty. Kapag di ka lumaban, matatalo ka, mawawala ang lahat sa'yo. If you choose to give up, if you choose to be dismayed, discouraged, disappointed, you will lose everything. But, if you choose to fight bravely and be strong in the Lord, the enemy cannot take anything that the Lord has been given to you. Amen. So don't give up. Don't. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and fight bravely. Amen? If they lost this battle, we're talking about Joab, they would lose both their people in their cities. This was a battle bigger than themselves, and the army of the mighty men had to remember that. That's why when I'm meditating this message, actually this is supposed to be the message last Sunday. But God stopped me and prepared us from the first part. We learned the first part, and we are going to learn this. If you will not fight, you will lose your family. If you will not fight, you will lose many opportunities. If you will not fight, you will lose the person you love. Are you still there? Amen? Ulitin ko in Tagalog. Kapag di ka lumaban, if you did not fight, matatalo ka. You will lose. At mawawala ang lahat sa'yo. Everything will be God. Do you want it? It's not our portion. The Bible says in Ephesians 6.12, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Church, the beloved of the Lord Jesus Christ, let us be reminded by Ephesians 6.12 that we do not wrestle against flesh. In other words, our fight is not against the government, nor against the people, nor against your husband. Your fight is not against your sister or brother or your friend or your fiancé or your boss. That's not the fight. The real fight is a spiritual fight. There is a real battle, the unseen battle. That's why we need to keep praying, pray unceasingly, and be strong and courageous. Amen. I will speak in Tagalog. Hindi mo kalaban yung asawa mo. Hindi mo kalaban yung kapatid mo. Hindi mo kalaban si boss. Hindi mo kalaban ang kaklase mo, katrabaho mo. Those people around you are not your enemies. It says that they are your enemies. The physical enemy you can see because they are taunting you, they speak against you, they made a mistake against you, they betrayed you, they're so unfaithful to you, or he or she is unfaithful to you. They are not your enemies. The real enemies are insane. That's why if you give up your faith, that's why if you did not take the courage from the Lord and the strength from His word, you will lose everything. Separation is not the real solution. Amen? 
There are so many things happening in the world. But let us be reminded that the real battle, the unseen battle, is our struggle in prayer. The struggle in prayer for the souls of the unbelievers. Let us struggle in prayer for forgiveness when we have been wronged. Nakamarish sayo, he committed a mistake against you. Then what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Give up that relationship or fight a good fight of faith. Knowing what the Lord has started, He's able to finish because He's faithful God. And what the enemy has taken, the Lord can restore. Amen? And He can add more. Let us struggle in prayer for holiness when sin tempts, for peace in fearful, fearful circumstances, for joy when sorrow comes, for trust when doubts are same. Church, the struggle is real, but let's bring the struggle in prayer. The battle is real, but fight the good fight of faith. Pray and say something. And you, then you're going to experience and receive the strength from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So we battle for the hearts of those around us as we fight for them in prayer. Wag mong susukuan yan. Wag mo siyang susukuan. Don't give up on him. Keep fighting for him. Lord, you promise. If I believe, my household will be saved. You promise. My husband will be changed. You promise your children will be changed. You promise our economy, our situation will be changed. Lord! Amen? Fight! Be strong. Be courageous. We battle for the hearts of those around us as we fight for them in prayer and we battle for ourselves as we bring opinions and arguments in line with the knowledge of God, the enemy will bring us in the situation where there are less of arguments, there are less of voices and opinions. But, church, daughters and sons of the living God, bring all the opinions, bring all the arguments in line with the knowledge of God. That's why Joshua has been commanded to meditate the word Day and night. And I'm giving you a challenge, J1 family and all of you right now. I'm giving you a challenge for a one-month devotion. What's that? Easy. Buy a nice notebook, pen, and get your Bible. Each morning, you read a passage, a chapter, a verse in the Bible. You can start wherever book you want. You can start from the New Testament or to the Old Testament. But I encourage you to start in the New Testament, in the Gospel. Then, you pray to God. It just only takes 10 to 15 minutes, each morning and each night. As you read, there's a powerful part of that verse that, you, that for sure will hit your heart. Write it down. And write what did you learn and what did you see or observe from that. And that's it. That's your devotion. Can you take the challenge? That's hard. That's for your benefit. If you really want to be strong and courageous and experience the strength of God, I encourage you. That will help. Not only help, it has great benefit for you. One month challenge. And after that, we will do another one month challenge. I read a book that says, it takes 21 days to develop a habit. So, we're doing that in 30 days. I believe it's not only a habit, it will be a lifestyle. Because the Lord commanded to Joshua, the Lord will not give that commandment if Joshua will not benefit from it. It will not be written in the Bible if that commandment will not help us. Right? It says, the book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. That's when the word of God should be declared by you. Not the negative things or words. But you shall meditate it in the day and night. There are, there are people practicing yoga. 
Do you know what's that? Yeah, it says, oh, it's cleansing of the mind or meditating, or emptying your mind. Are you emptying your mind? And who will come in if you empty your mind? You know what? Yoga is a new age movement thing. That's against the principle of the scripture of God. And then deliverance. We have lots of experience with people who have been delivered. Because the devil got in their hearts, in their minds, in their lives because of this meditation. The meditation thing that the Lord is teaching in this, in this part of the verse of Joshua is that the meditation of the, being practiced by the Eastern religion, which is they are practicing the yoga. If you're sitting and you are emptying your mind. The Bible is not encouraging us to do that. Why? Because you empty your mind, who will come in? The devil, the demons. Do you want to be controlled by them? That's why there are Christians who are not possessed, but demonized. What does it mean? There are parts of their lives that are affected by the ways of the enemies because of that practice. That's why I, start, I encourage you not to do that. It's still your choice to continue it or not. But the real meditation the Lord is telling us is to meditate in day and night. What does it mean? Not to empty your mind. But to fill your mind with the words and the promises of God. Amen. That's the real meditation that the Lord wants us. Does I encourage you? Take this one month challenge. Buy a nice notebook. So that you will not throw it. That you will not cover it. Use to cover some tinapa. Did you tinapa? Dried fish. Smoked fish, rather. Thank you. Amen. Church, I encourage you, meditate the word day and night. Meditate the word day and night. And you will, look at that. Meditate in a, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. Many Christians are saying they are Christians, but they are not able to do what is written in it. Because they don't meditate the word. They don't fill their hearts and their minds. And they don't apply the word in their lives. It says, for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. That's the secret of God that's being told to us. For you to be successful in your spiritual life, and I do believe that before everything happens in physical, it happens in spiritual. So, if you want to be successful in life, let your spirit be successful. How? Feed it. Feed it with the word of God. How? By meditating day and night. Again, can you see your hand? Are you going? Are you up for the challenge? The last of challenges in Facebook, in YouTube, right? But this is the best challenge. J1 people, those who are watching, I I, I'm challenging you. Bring out your sword, the Word of God. Meditate it day and night. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And. You can send that to me. Pastor, here's my meditation. Here's my devotion. Just picture it. Send it to me. The messenger. I will not read it. Because I know you're not good in writing. <laughs> or your handwriting is not really good. No, I'm just joking. I just, I just want to say, oh, you're doing it. Praise God. That's not for my benefit. That's for you. Amen? Yes. Starting tonight. What? I did not buy you. You go after this. All right. Paul, uh, Paul fought the battle for arguments, the theories and reasoning. So that's why I want you to be like that. The enemy will fill their mind with lots of reasoning, but no, let's not do that. Hallelujah. So winning the battle leads to a heart filled with encouragement, close relationship with other believers, and the ability to stand true. So God fights for you. Though we struggle for others in the ancient world, but God fights for you. We do not fight alone. Amen? We do not fight alone. We face physical struggles that threaten our homes, our families, amen? Our savings, our country, and more. And the ancient battle fought by the spiritual forces of evil is far bigger than the visible battle. And I want you to be strong and courageous because God is fighting for us. 
If he did that to Daniel, if he did that to Joseph, if he did that to Moses, to Joshua, to David, he is able to do that for you and for us. Amen. Hallelujah. So, my dear brothers and sisters, I want you to be reminded about Mo, what Moses said to the people of Israel in Exodus chapter 14, beginning 13 to 14. He said, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. Amen? Can you say to the person close to you, Fear not, stand firm. And see the salvation of the Lord. Amen. For the Egyptians representing your enemy. Whom you see today. You shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you. And you have only to be silent. Be still. And know that I am God. Amen. So Daniel was able to calmly enter the lion's den. Joseph was able to um, experience those sufferings from Potiphar's house to the prison, but he experienced goodness of God in the palace. More of his goodness. Laban, huwag mong susukuan ang matagal mo nang pinaglalaban. Fight. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Fight for your loved ones. Fight for the things that you treasure in your heart that are according to the will of God. Fight the good fight of faith. Jesus Christ our Lord fought for us on the cross. And this is the good news. He won. He won. That's why kapag may pinagdadaanan, may pinagtatagumpayan. If you're going through on something, for sure, by God's grace, you will be victor after that. You will be victorious. Magkabi-kabi laban ng atake sa'yo, lumaban ka. Though there are lots of struggles, there are, not, there are lots of enemies, surrounded by the enemies. But don't forget, you are not fighting alone, but God is fighting for you. Now, are you strong? Are you courageous? And the last reminder. And may the Lord do what is good in His sight. Amen. Let the Lord do what is good in His eyes. After you did everything. <coughs> you took the strength. You believed in His word. You fought. And let the Lord do what is good in His sight. Amen? In His sight. The Lord's will be done. Don't fight. Wait. Don't fight to God. Okay? Tapang makipaglaban sa Diyos. Do what you need to do. Let us do what we need to do. Fight. A good fight. Okay. Amen. Christ soldiers, let us strengthen one another. Let us courage, encourage one another. Let us be God's instrument to strengthen each one of us and others. The Lord do what what he wants, what he will. The Lord do that which serves him good. Let's do our part. Amen. Let's do our part. And let's give everything to God. Leave everything to God. We say be of good courage. It's just being told. You can do that. You can be strong. You can be courageous. Now, before I end, I was just reminded what Joshua remembered. Why he was able to strong and courageous and why Joab jo was able to say these words. Okay, but before that, it's easy 
to focus on our problems. Which we can see, right? And not on God, whom we can't. But Joshua discovered that God is with us no matter where we are or how big our problems look like. So to remember continually that the Lord was with him, despite what circumstances might indicate to the contrary. That's why people of the Lord, we need really, we really need courage and to be strong. Adversity is a bridge. It's a bridge to a deeper relationship with God. As Charles Stanley said. So the need of prayer is any time you take risks for God. Fear and discouragement are subject to your will. So through faith in God, you can rule over them. And not the fear and discouragement rule over you. Let us be reminded. Let us remind ourselves daily of what you heard God say in His Word. Stay close to Him and refuse to allow yourself to give into fear and discouragement. Let us be reminded that the battle is not ours, but the Lord's. Ang lahat ng itindi sa iyo, sa Lord. And let us be reminded, Joab's strategy is not to retreat, but to attack. Christian soldiers, soldiers of the living God, the heavenly armies, we are not going to retreat. Amen? I am not going to retreat. How about you? Amen? No surrender, no retreat. Attack. Fight! A good fight in faith, knowing that the Lord made us strong and courageous. Amen? Let us make no allowance to, for the possibility of ultimate defeat. Because we are not fighting to become victors, but we are fighting from the position of victory. Amen? Amen? Christ won. That's why the Bible says we are more than conquerors. In English word, we are more than conquerors. That's five words. Amen? But in original Greek translation, where you translate, it's only one word. What's that? Super overcomer. Or super conqueror. Amen. Amen. If you are being reminded we are more than conquerors, it means only we are super conqueror. Who are super conquerors here? Amen. Who are super overcomers here? Amen. Those will let us make no allowance for the possibility of ultimate defeat. We should not retreat at all. Hallelujah. I'm not mad. I'm just stressing this point. Walang susuko J1 people. No one should give up or retreat. The sovereign will of God is doing a work in our lives that is preparation for our calling to be strong and courageous. So in walking His will, mga kapatid, let us not uh, let us not forget his message. Let us read this. Joshua remembered. He remembered God's promises. For you to be strong and courageous, remember God's promises. Amen? May visa ang pangako sapagkat Diyos ang nangako. If God said it, He will do it. The Bible tells us plainly that there are three things that God cannot do. Three things he cannot do. What? I thought he's God. He is omnipotent. He is omnipresent. He is all powerful. These are the things he cannot do. God cannot be tempted with evil. God cannot deny himself. And God cannot lie. That's why when he said, This is my promise, 
I will do it. Amen? Let us remember God's principles. What's the principle of God? Be strong and courageous. If you're going to be strong and courageous, you need to go to the Word of God. You need to read it, obey it, sing it, love it, live by it. I am reminding you, one man challenge. Amen? Let us remember not only his principles, but remember his presence. What did he say? And I will go wherever you go. Amen? Amen? All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, Jesus said, I am with you all ways to the end of the age. Matthew chapter 28, 18 to 20. So no matter what your situation is or how alone you may feel, there's good news for you, dear child of God. You are not alone. Our Lord Jesus Christ is with you. Again, we do not fight to get victory, but we fight from victory because the victory that Jesus applied at Calvary has become our victory. Never accept the lies that you are defeated, that you are nothing. Do not accept this lie, no matter your circumstances or what you are currently facing. You have the absolute authority over the end. Amen? Let us let the Lord be our confidence. The enemy works through situations, through the words, through accusation, just to dismantle. He is attempting to dismantle our confidence in the Lord. But no, let not discouragement, let not your courage be robbed because of the discouragement. Let us not forget his promises. Keep eyes on the prize. Amen? Keep eyes on the prize. No matter if you are a brother or a sister and you want to quit, I am telling you, keep going forward. God is with you. Amen? If you're saying it's over, God said, don't retreat. Don't surrender. I'll be with you. Church, God is promising to be with us. That's why rise up, dear believer of the Lord. Victory and breakthrough awaits you as you fulfill the divine assignments he assigned for you. Joab made himself strong and fought bravely and left everything in God's will. So Joshua was called by God to be strong and courageous and the same with us. Joshua's responsibility is to devote himself to being obedient and devoted to God. And the same thing we should do. Amen? Joshua was a limited individual like us, but is able to conquer the promised land because he took the strength and the courage from God and he chose to be strong and courageous. And asked so well, he left everything at the will of God. We don't know what will happen next in the next two months, but let's leave everything in God's hand. And I will call, I will quote what Billy Graham said God is on the throne, and He is in control. Amen. Amen. The dear brothers and sisters, we are called to be strong and courageous as we obey God. If we're going to prosper and have success, we must be shaped by these resources. May God help us to be strong and courageous. Let's pray. Lord, I don't know what we need uh, to do before because there are lots of things happening in this world. And our families, in our ministry, in our job, relationships, in finances, in health, in, many, in all domains of our lives. But God, this is what we pray. And we are decided, Lord, this is our choice. We are taking the strength and the courage from you 
and we choose to be strong and we choose to be courageous. Thank you so much, Lord. And we leave everything before you. Let your perfect will be done concerning this church, concerning each individual life, concerning every detail of our lives. Knowing that you know the best, you have the control, and you are God who is forever faithful. Thank you, Abba Father. Bless my dear brothers and sisters with the strength, with the courage that come from you. To you, God, the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Because